Thanks so much. So, so it's a very exciting to be here. And it is also very exciting to hear Professor Bernouas just talk. So I, I just uh, want to, now we want to switch gear to go to a very large scale to look into uh, genome size systems. And today I want to share with you a story about how we recently implement a neo-atomistic cost grant chromatin model to leverage this computational advance to look into large chromatin system and to uncover the underlying mechanistic insights. So as we know that genome is a remarkable machine, from its early state of discovery, it has been hailed as the blueprint of life. This tiniest the nucleus has been able to encode the millions of species on Earth, and it is also what makes all the difference among all the cells inside our bodies. Yet genome is also a complicated machine. Take this human genome, for example, this 10 microns of nucleus has been able to include more than, more than two meters of DNA. And in order for that to happen, genome initiate a optimized hierarchical organizations. And today I'm going to focus on the fundamental level to go all the way from the double strand DNA going all the way into this chromatin system. And at a fundamental level, genome start with a double strand DNA wrapping around a positively charged histone octamer to form the basic building block of the genome organization, the nucleosome. And a series of nucleosomes organize itself to become the basic motif of the genome, a chromatin system. And here at the forefront of science, there are many unresolved questions. For example, there's a recent heated discussion about the existence of regular or irregular chromatin structure. Whereas some early study by electron microscopy revealed that this chromatin exists more or less as a ordered fibrio-like structure with a diameter of 30 nanometers and giving it a name 30 nanometer fiber. Later study shows that at a fundamental level, chromatin in vivo more or less exists as an irregular structure. At the upper level, there's also a key discussion about the physical property of the chromatin. It was found that at some condition, the chromatin can organize itself into a liquid condensate. But at some other condition, people find that chromatin can exist as a solid state. So we are interested in looking into these problems by using computational modeling or simulation, which would enable a high resolution simulations of its dynamics and to reveal its underlying mechanism. However, the computation is a, a big challenge here because a chromatin, generally speaking, is a very large system. And to overcome these difficulties, over the last few years, we implemented a coarse grained chromatin model, and we call it the neo atomistic chromatin model. And essentially, it is a coarse grained model and it is an implicit solvent model. So we try to make it efficient enough so that it can converge simulations of large biomolecules. And also, we want to make it accurate enough so that it can reproduce many experimental measurements. Briefly speaking, at a DNA level, we utilize this 3SPM model, which utilizes three bits to represent each nucleotide of DNA. And at a protein level, we utilize this alpha-based structure-based model, which utilizes each bit to represent the alpha site of each protein residues. And combining them together with a rigorous treatment of protein DNA interactions, we end up with this neo-atomistic chromatin model. And I want to also mention that we are actually not the first group to study using this model. Over the last few years, multiple groups have been using different variants of this model and apply them successfully to study many chromatin systems. And here I'm going to use this model to study large chromatin systems and to look into the gene organization at a fundamental level. And because it is an implicit solvent model, so it requires a rigorous, rigorous treatment of protein DNA interactions. So in order to further improve the model, uh, I, I combine this electrostatic interaction between protein and DNA approximated by the divide Huckel approximation, combining that with a statistical potential to treat these protein DNA hydrophobic interactions. 
AI test out this new model with a series of protein DNA complexes with experimentally measured binding affinities. So comparing that with a traditional approach which use uh, like exclusive electrostatic interactions, as you can see, the new model correlate better in terms of this correlation between simulated predicted binding affinity compared with the experimentally measured binding affinity. So it has a improvement over the prediction of the binding affinity. So utilize this model, we first study a example system, which is a dinucleosome system, which is two nucleosomes connected by a linkage in DNA. So if I'm going to simulate this system using a fully detailed atomistic simulation, it would easily necessitate millions of beads in my simulation. So it would be very hard to converge by using computation. But by using this model, we can actually converge the simulation within several days. And also, we want to test it out its accuracy. So for that purpose, we compare the simulation with a single molecule FRAT experiment. So in FRAT experiment, what they did is test it out for two systems, one with 50 base pairs of linker DNA, the other with 55 base pairs of linker DNA. And they measure the unwrapping frequency of this linker DNA. And interestingly, they find that just by increasing five base pairs of linker DNA, this dinucleosome system has a, a larger chance of being unwrapped. So if I use this model to simulate exactly the same system, I find excitingly this model not only qualitatively reproduces the trend of this unwrapping frequency, it also quantitatively reproduces this unwrapping frequency in numbers. And I also want to stress that we do not use any experimental input to tune our parameters. We use the default parameter of this model to do the simulation. And this gives us a strong confidence to further apply this model to push it to a larger chromatin system to study the chromatin organizations. And as you will see, by gradually growing the size of the system, rather than a simple Lego, we've been able to reveal and enrich knowledge about its underlying thermodynamics and, and kinetics. And specifically, we want to, our study can reconcile the difference between the regular and irregular chromatin structure, as well as the difference between the solid and liquid state of the chromatin. So our first study starts with a tetranucleosome structure, which is a series of four nucleosomes organized itself into a tetranucleosome fold. The reason we study a tetranucleosome is because it's the basic unit that encodes all these different interactions among nucleosomes. For example, it has the basic nucleosome, nucleosome stack interaction, nucleosome sliding interaction, as well as the unwrapping of the nucleosomal DNA, as well as this portion of the linker DNA. And also a recent high C experiment, which is basically a genome-wide experiment capturing the chromatin contact, shows that at a fundamental level, the genome starts with a tetranucleosome motif. So when I simulate this system, I utilize two collective variables to track the simulation. One is called Q, which captures the difference among different configurations of the system. The other is called the radius of duration, which captures the size of the system. So if we just do a brute force simulation of the system, the system would be easily trapped into a local minima, as shown here. That is because the chromatin, generally speaking, is a highly charged system. So there are a lot of non-specific electrostatic interactions, slowing down the dynamics of the system. So in order to improve that, we utilize a technique that was developed recently by the Takamans group, which is basically an enhanced sampling technique combining these uh, temperature accelerated MD method plus these metadynamics techniques. And as you can see, by applying this enhanced sampling method, we've been able to increase the sampling frequency of the system. And when we project our simulation into the 2D space, we find that the simulation also covers the configuration regional space very well. And because the QARG is anti-correlated, that's why we only cover the lower half of the triangular space. And of course, the simulation will reveal much more insight than the two parameters. So for that purpose, for a visual clarity, I omit this nucleosome core from my simulation by showing the interaction between the nucleosomal DNA and these histone tails. 
And as you can see, we not only sampled a lot of uh, all the, the stacked Fibrio-like structure, our simulation also revealed a series of irregular structure from the simulation, such as this coplanar structure and this trinucleosome structure. And more interestingly, when we project our simulation into two, two other collective variables, basically the distance between the first and the third nucleosome and that between the second and the fourth nucleosome, we find two interesting kinetic pathways. One is called the concerted pathway, where all four nucleosomes organize itself into the final fibrio-like ordered states. And in another sequential pathways, we have three nucleosomes comes into each other before the final nucleosome join me to fold into the final fibrio-like states. And more importantly, this irregular structure emerges as the intermediate during the folding of this uh, tetranucleosome. For example, this coplanar structure emerged as intermediate during the folding of the concerted pathway, and this trinucleosome structure emerges as intermediate during the folding of the sequential pathway. And also, we find that this structure has, is also consistent with a recently identified structure from the experiment, in vivo experiment. For example, this coplanar structure resembles this beta lumbar structure from a high C experiment, and this trinucleosome structure resembles those identified from the cryo electron tomography experiment. And we are also interested in learning the thermodynamic stability of the system. And for that purpose, we want to construct a free energy diagram for all the six pairs of the distance from this tetranucleosome structure. And that necessitate a six dimensional free energy landscape. That would be difficult to construct by using traditional method. So we borrow another technique from the Tuckerman's group, which is basically a neural network technique by training a neural network to minimize the difference between the gradient of the neural network output and the mean force calculated from the simulation. And by doing that, this trained neural network will give us an output of this free energy diagram given the input of the six dimensional features. And we can further project that to these two collective variables that I previously talked about. And as you can see, this order structure still emerges as a most stable state during the folding of the tetranucleosomes. And we can further study the impact from a post-translational modifications. And for that purpose, we initiate a multi-scale scale modeling. And Rosanna uh, generously provide us with some early, her early study with some atomistic simulation with some structure from the acetylated histone for tails. And we allowing us to combine that into a, our neo atomistic model. And we apply a similar technique to result in this, uh, this uh, modified free energy landscape. And as you can see, the acetylated tetranucleosome features a more destabilized free energy landscape with some basing and some extended irregular structure. So acetylation of H4 tail would destabilize the regular structure of the tetranucleosome. And that suggests that this irregular structure is not so different in terms of thermodynamic stability from the regular structure and subject to some environmental perturbations such as uh, post-translational modifications, we can easily kill the balance of the system to favor some irregular counting structure. So a short summary from this study is that we find this uh, irregular structure is not so different from the regular structure. And they emerges as kinetic intermediate during the folding of the tetranucleosome through two pathways. And also subject to some environmental perturbations such as post-translational modifications, this irregular structure can interconvert between the irregular to regular structure. And this actually give us a setup in a very good stage to look into a more realistic and more complicated system. And for that purpose, we study a 12-mer chromatin system, which is 12 nucleosomes organized into each other. And we are interested in learning how this chromatin system responds to an in vivo environment. Basically, the tension exerted by different molecular motor proteins and the cloudy environment. And the reason we study a 12 mer system, it is because there are currently many studies from experiment understanding system at these scales. 
for example, there's a cryo yang experiment, there's a single molecular thread experiment, and more recently, there's a single molecular pooling experiment by magnetic tweezers. And also the 12 system is kind of the minimal system that shows the organization of the basic tetranucleosome motifs. So if you are trying to simulate this system by brute force, as you can imagine, the 12 mesh system would be even slower to converge than a tetranucleosome system. So to make progress, we try to make use of our tetranucleosome study. So essentially, we utilize this learned free energy landscape of the tetranucleosome system and utilize a divide and conquer method to grow one nucleosome at a time to build the effective potential energy landscape of the 12 system. Then we start a Monte Carlo sampling on this effective energy landscape before we finally mapping that into a neo atomistic model for more detailed and de simulation. So first of all, we are interested in learning how the chromatin respond to external force, the tension. And for that purpose, we apply some external force on the end-to-end -end distance of the chromatin system. And we compare our simulation with a recently done single molecular pooling experiment by magnetic tweezers. And interestingly, our simulation can reproduce relatively well the force extension curve as identified from the experiment as shown here we can re reproduce well this linear regime at some lower tension. And we can also reproduce the transition of the system into some plateau regime where it goes into some higher tension, featuring some extended states. And the simulation also reveal multiple structural insights. For example, at this lower tension linear regime, we find the system, the chromatin, we prefer to go through some shearing motion. Basically, two nucleosomes will slide on top of each other. And to further quantify that, we project our system into uh, two collective variables. One is this uh, average normal distance between two nucleosomes. The other is this average shearing distance between two nucleosomes. And as you can see, the projected free energy landscape shows that it is much flatter in, in terms of shearing distance compared with the normal distance, demonstrating that the system will prefer to go through some shearing motion under tension. Also, interestingly, when we go into this plateau region, we find that this chromatin would unstack, but they do not unstack uniformly. And specifically, they will unstack into a series of clusters that features either trinucleosome or tetranucleosome structures. And interestingly, this tetranucleosome or trinucleosome structure also resembles very well this irregular chromatin structure that was identified from the previous tetranucleosome study. So these two stories come into each other, demonstrating that this irregular structure is not so different from the regular chromatin structure. They emerge as intermediate intermediate during the folding of the chromatin. Also, these cluster structures is very consistent with a recently identified nucleosome clutches structure from the super resolution imaging experiment. And finally, we are interested in learning how the chromatin respond to a clouded environment. So for that purpose, we simulate two chromatin interacting with each other. And we find the two interesting stable states. One is this parallel state where these two chromatin lie align parallel to each other and stay compact. But more interestingly, we find an interdigitated state where the first chromatin opens up, allowing the second chromatin to insert in to further stabilize the state. When I project the simulation into this free energy, we find that the first state features this spacing A. But the second interdigitated state, interdigitated state features a more stable base in B. And we can understand it by looking into the physical chemistry of these nucleosomes. It was found that this stack interaction between two nucleosomes is much stronger than the side-by-side -side interactions between two nucleosomes. So whereas the first chrome team pays some energetic penalty by opening up its structure, it was further stabilized by the insertion of the second chrome team. And this actually offers some explanation for a recent discussion about the solid or liquid state of the chromatin system. 
The existence of this interdigitated state would increase the attraction strength between nucleosomes, as well as their, their packing density. And also this entangled structure of the clunky would arrest the dynamics of the system, driving the transition of the system from the liquid state into a solid gel state. So to sum up, I just share with you a story about how we build a neoatomistic chromatin model and apply that to study large chromatin system. Our study with a uh, dinucleosome system reproduced quantitatively the experimental measurement by single molecular thread experiment. And when we apply that to a tetranucleosome study, we find this irregular structure emerges as kinetic intermediate during the folding of the tetranucleosome through two kinetic pathways. And we also find that subject to some environmental perturbations, they can easily interconvert between each other. And when we push that into a more realistic chromatin system, we find that the chromatin respond to force differently. And the lower tension, it prefers to go through some shearing motion. And under higher tension, it prefers to break into some nucleosome clutches. And finally, our study with two chromatins finds an interesting interdigitated state, suggesting a mechanism to transition for the chromatin to transition between the solid to liquid states. So 100 years after the first discovery of the chromatin, we are still perhaps far away from really understanding its inner secrets. But with the recent progress from experiment or computation, we are at least one step further. And with that, I want to thank my PI, Bing Zhang, and his lab, as well as the colleagues that uh, we work together for the story that I share with you today. I also want to thank our collaborators, Shishin Liu's lab at the local Fenner universities. And with that, I'm very happy to take your question.